Part 19 Early Islam, the First Converts In the earliest days of prophethood, immediately following the revelation of Arise and Warn, Surah 74, verse 2, the prophet would preach to his family and closest friends. An argument can be made for Khadijah being the first convert to Islam, as she believed in the prophet before even knowing what had truly happened, demonstrating her unwavering faith. As such, Waraka ibn Naufal would be the second to convert despite never uttering the Shahada. Scholars differ over the third convert to Islam. Some say Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, some say Ali ibn Abi Talib, and some say Zayd ibn Haritha. The way some scholars reconcile all these opinions is to say, Khadijah was the first woman to accept Islam, Abu Bakr was the first free man to accept Islam, Ali was the first child to accept Islam, and Zayd was the first freed slave to accept Islam. There is, however, no dispute regarding the status of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. The Ummah of Islam is unanimous in championing Abu Bakr as the best of all companions. The Prophet said, Allah has chosen me as a Khalil, close friend, so I am not allowed to choose a Khalil, but if I were allowed, I would choose Abu Bakr. Once, when Abu Bakr and Umar had an argument, the Prophet said to Umar, when Allah sent me with the truth, all of you accused me of being a liar, and it was only Abu Bakr who believed me. So won't you leave my companion alone? On another occasion he said, There was not a single man whom I invited to Islam except that he had some doubts before converting, except for Abu Bakr. For as soon as I presented Islam to him, he did not hesitate before accepting. Abu Bakr was directly referenced in the Quran. It does not matter if you do not support him, for Allah did in fact support him when the disbelievers drove him out of Mecca, and he was only one of two. Surah 9, verse 40. This is in reference to the Prophet and Abu Bakr hiding in the cave, moments away from capture and death. The verse continues, While they were both in the cave, he reassured his companion, Do not worry, for Allah is certainly with us. Surah 9, verse 40. Allah refers to Abu Bakr as the Prophet's companion which is indeed sufficient to praise. The next batch of converts all accepted Islam at the hand of Abu Bakr, further reinforcing his status in Islam and his integral role as the Prophet's helper. They were Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Uthman ibn Affan, Zubair ibn al-Awam, and Abdur Rahman ibn Auf. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas was the youngest at around 16 years of age. His faith was so strong that he remained steadfast despite his mother's severe emotional blackmail. She went on a hunger strike, not eating or drinking until he renounced his faith and returned to idol worship. Her health deteriorated until she began withering away. Saad finally said, Oh my mother, I will never renounce Islam. Even if you had one thousand lives, I would let you lose them, one after the other, before renouncing my faith. Only upon witnessing such unwavering faith did she realize her efforts were futile, and so began eating and drinking again. Allah revealed verses of Quran in response to this event. But if they pressure you to associate with me what you have no knowledge of, do not obey them, but keep their company in this world courteously, and follow the way of those who turn to me in devotion. Surah 31, verse 15. Uthman ibn Affan was one of the Prophet's closest friends. The Prophet said, even the angels are shy in his presence. He went on to become the third caliph in Islam. Zubair ibn al-Awam is a direct cousin of the Prophet, his mother being Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib. The Prophet once said, every Prophet has his disciples, and my disciple is Zubair ibn al-Awam. Abdurrahman ibn Auf was the oldest of these four converts. When he emigrated to Medina, he left behind all his possessions and did so with no money or belongings. One of the Ansar, helpers in Medina, famously said, I have two wives and two gardens. I will divorce one wife for you and give you one garden. Abdur Rahman ibn Auf replied, May Allah bless you, just direct me towards the marketplace. In no time, his entrepreneurial nature led him to be of the wealthiest businessmen in Medina, serving the Prophet in every way he could. Each of these early converts became giants in the Muslim Ummah, leading prominent lives in Islam and playing pivotal roles in the growth and development of Islamic society. The next to convert was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. 
He was the first prominent figure not from a noble class to convert. He was not a slave, but was of the servant class. He was hired as a shepherd for Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, a severe enemy of Islam. One day the Prophet was traveling with Abu Bakr, and as they passed by a farm, they said to Ibn Masud, O young man, we are thirsty. Can you give us some milk? Ibn Masud, demonstrating his honesty and integrity early on, replied, I cannot, because it is not mine to give. The Prophet said, Very well, show us one of the elderly she-goats that has stopped giving milk. Ibn Masud pointed to one, and the Prophet went to the goat, made dua, and its udder filled until it was full. So the two of them drank. In his astonishment, Ibn Mas'ud asked who he was talking to, and after introducing himself as a prophet, Ibn Mas'ud converted on the spot, becoming the sixth convert to Islam. The prophet once said about Ibn Mas'ud, Whoever would like to know how to recite the Quran properly as it was originally revealed should read according to the recitation of Ibn Um Abd, that is, Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud once said, I learned more than seventy surahs, chapters, directly from the mouth of the Prophet. The next batch of converts primarily comprised the slave class of Mecca. The most famous of them were Bilal ibn Rabah, Habab ibn al-Arat, and Yasir ibn Amir, alongside his wife Sumaya bint Hayat, and their son Amar ibn Yasir. Later, when the Prophet wrote to the Byzantine emperor Heraclius, the emperor quizzed Abu Sufyan, the Prophet's enemy. One of his questions were, Who are his followers? Are they the rich and powerful, or the weak and downtrodden? Abu Sufyan replied that the latter was true, and Heraclius responded, This is the sign of a true faith, that the first people who accept are the weak and downtrodden. The rich and powerful have more to lose by the changing of the status quo. They are also more embedded in their own philosophies and traditions. The poor, on the other hand, have less attachment to the world. The first non-Meccan convert to Islam was Amr ibn Abbasa, a Yemeni Arab. He recalled, I always knew that idolatry was wrong. One day, news came to me that someone in Mecca was preaching the same, so I traveled all the way from Yemen to Mecca to meet him. Amr found the prophet who had not yet publicly disclosed his prophethood. After conversing, Amr asked, What are you? To which the prophet replied, I am a messenger. Amr asked to join the Prophet, but the Prophet did not allow it, for the Dawah was too weak and Amr would have no protection. The Prophet then said, Return home, and when news reaches you that I am victorious, come back. The Prophet demonstrated his firm belief at the earliest stage of his prophethood. Over fifteen years later, when the Muslims entered Medina, Amr delivered on his promise and reunited with the Prophet.